This review is made possible by Gerald Kia in Naperville. Gerald's outstanding staff is ready to find the perfect car for you. Whether it be new or used, your next car is waiting for you at Gerald Kia. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2021 Kia Sedona LX. Up front is a 3.3 liter V6 and down below is an eight speed automatic transmission. Now I'm excited to be driving this here Sedona for one reason and one reason only. I have recently been in multiple conversations with multiple different people about why minivans are cool. People don't seem to like minivans anymore. They're sort of getting phased out. There was a point in time where almost every auto manufacturer used to make a minivan. Nissan no longer makes a minivan. Mazda no longer makes a minivan. Chevy no longer makes a minivan. Ford no longer makes a minivan. And all of those companies used to. So why are they going away and why do I think that it's the wrong decision to move away from the minivan? Well, we'll talk about that in this video. So let's get back to that 3.3 liter V6. I'll put the horsepower and torque up on the screen. Nobody cares about that. Let's talk about the miles per gallon. Not fantastic, but also not terrible. Now the Sedona does not have a hybrid option like the Chrysler Pacifica or the Toyota Sienna. And for right now, I think that's okay. Those are sort of transitional vehicles. However, I think that this Sedona does need an update in the next couple years here, and hopefully a hybrid option will be part of that update. Like I said, paired to an eight speed automatic transmission, Nothing really too crazy again here. I've been driving it for a little while now and it's been shifting totally fine. I don't really notice it. It's nice, smooth and quiet. And something else about the engine going back to it for a split second is when I started this car up, there wasn't a single vibration. I didn't even know the engine was on until I heard it, which can't be said about other minivans. Last but not least, of course the Sedona is front wheel drive and there is no all wheel drive offered like on the Sienna. So now we gotta talk about the interior. We have quite a bit to go through in here, but this is an LX, which is more of a basic Sedona. This isn't the top tier. This isn't the top dog or anything like that. So just keep that in mind as we talk about it. In front of me, I have two physical gauges. On the left is my tachometer with coolant temperature down at the bottom. And on the right is my speedometer with fuel at the bottom. And then I have a little information screen in the middle. I can cycle through a couple pages, which is what I'm doing right now. Pretty basic. It's nothing really wowing. I don't have like a G meter. I don't have, you know, any cool fancy graphics or anything like that. However, this is a Sedona minivan. So so par for the course with that. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my voice commands mode, skip track, volume, and phone options. And on the right, I have my page selector for that center screen in the dash and my cruise control options. The steering wheel overall is okay. It is sort of like this hard plastic. And this is one of the moments where I'm feeling like this is sort of a base model Sedona. To the left of me, I just have my traction control off and my gauge dimmer switch, as well as I have my fuel door. And on the door, I have my power windows, power locks, and power mirrors. Up above me, I do have power door control. So it's very nice that the LX does come with power sliding doors and that's controlled up here on the center console, as well as I have like dome lights and I can also turn off the power door, which is a great feature. Moving into the center, I have a pretty standard Kia infotainment system. I do have some nice buttons on the side. I can go home, seek track menu, radio, things like that. I can go to my menus. I do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as aux in, and I have something called quiet mode which is really, really nice. When quiet mode is selected, the radio and media is only played to the front seats. All volume levels above seven will be decreased to seven. So if you have kids that are sleeping in the back, basically on any road trip ever, you can actually still enjoy your music. It'll only pipe it to the front speakers. You won't wake them up and you could still stay sane when you're driving back from Disney World. I really, really like that quiet mode, and I think that should be in all cars, but it's rarely found in other vehicles. I've seen it here in Kias, but not much else. Now let's take a quick second to take a look at the backup camera, throw it in reverse here. I like the backup camera. It's not the highest of quality camera, but you have to remember the price point of this vehicle is $31,000, so it's fine. Although I do have adjusting lines when I do turn the steering wheel, so it'll adjust my trajectory, which is fantastic. I think all cars should have that sort of help when it comes to the backup camera. 
But before we get on with the rest of the video, I want to say thank you to the people who made this video possible. First up, CashForCars.com wants to buy your car. They will buy your car with a clean title, salvage title, running, non-running, whatever it may be. You can get your free quote by clicking the link in the description below. CashForCars.com is the easiest way to sell your car. Within a couple of clicks, they'll come pick up your car in less than 24 hours. You don't even have to leave the couch and it's absolutely awesome. Next up, we have con plates. The con plate is a suction cup mount for your license plate when you don't want to mount it to the front of your car. If you have to legally have a front license plate like you do here in Illinois, but you don't want to stick it on the front of your car, you think it's ugly, you want to take it off for car shows, whatever it may be, you can actually just put your license plate into the suction cup holder and put it in your front windshield when driving around to remain legal. You can get your con plate in the description below and every sale helps out the channel so make sure your car looks good with con plates last but not least i want to talk about the fixed obd2 sensor now this is a bluetooth sensor that you plug into your obd2 port on your car and it gives you a ton of cool information like your check engine lights how to fix your check engine lights approximately how much it should cost maintenance intervals like oil change tire rotation brake pads when you should change that stuff out this is absolutely fantastic for anyone into cars or anyone looking to get into mechanics Fixed is offering my viewers a discount through that link, so go check it out and again, help support the channel. But with all of that out of the way, let's get on with the review. Down below that, we have our hazard switch and our climate control options. I do have dual zone as well as rear air conditioning options and heating options here on the center display, and I can lock the rear so the kids can't fiddle with it or turn it on or off, things like that. Or I can let them choose. There are controls in the back, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Moving to the center console, I have an aux in, USB in, no USB-C, just traditional USB. Again, another point where I think the Sedona might need an update, and a 12 volt 180 watt outlet then i have a little cubby and the shifter and center controls so the shifter itself i like the look of it you'll find this in pretty much every other kia product but i really enjoy the feel of it when i click it into drive click it into park click it into reverse it has this nice solid clunk when it's switching gears and i I'm, i feel very satisfied by it i really like the feel of it and that's what i look for in automatic shifters down below that i just have eco mode and that's it i don't get a sport mode i don't get a comfort mode or dynamic or anything like that just eco or not then we do have cup holders off to the right so we'll do a big friggin bottle test and unfortunately the sedona fails the big friggin bottle test now this is a little bit disappointing because in a minivan you're going to be carrying bottles all over the place when i do a big friggin bottle test in like a sports car or an economy car that's just pretty much for continuity and just for a gimmick but i actually really care about the big freaking bottle test in minivans and pickup trucks because they are more utility vehicles and unfortunately this here sedona fails carrying on with the rest of the center console i do have a little cubby hole down at the bottom then i have a center console that opens which interestingly enough there's a little sunglasses holder and it actually has a picture of sunglasses pointing to it which is pretty funny and i don't think i've ever noticed in a car before now we got to talk about the seats the seats are decently comfortable they are not heated however they are power they are power adjusting seats which is very very nice for an lx and i really really like it but speaking of seats we have two more rows of seating as well as some cargo space so let's go take a look back there before we hop in the back of the Sedona, something I wanted to point out is that there's just this one button, power doors, one touch open, super easy. A hamster could press the button if they really wanted to, if they ever got out of their Kia Souls. And one touch close down there. All right, so now we're in the back seat of the 2021 Kia Sedona. I don't have anywhere to really mount the GoPro, so stick with me here. But something up here, I do have heating and air conditioning controls, which is great for the kids if they can reach it. Nothing down here. We get a lot of block off plates. I'll try to block the sun here. Try to expose that properly. A lot of block off plates, but I do have a little cubby down here. Nothing too crazy. This is a center seat that I can fold up, but right now it is folded down to form cup holders, which is very nice. If you aren't filling your minivan to the gills, you do get cup holders. Now, the room in here is actually really great. 
Leg room, I can spread out pretty nicely and I am fine. Head room, I have a ton of room above this big old noggin of mine, which can't be said about a lot of things. It's hard to fit my head in certain places, but this is totally fine. I do have vents on the ceiling, which I like, and I do have power windows. Like I said, power doors, that is a huge, huge deal to me because some minivans still don't come with power doors. And I think it just makes life so much easier when they do. But now we will hop into the third row and take a look back there. All right, so now we are in the least flattering angle for me in the Kia Sedona, but it's the only place I could put the GoPro. Sitting back here, well, it's fantastic. It really, really is. I have so much room back here. My head is barely touching the ceiling, barely, 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 but it's not really an issue. If we hit a speed bump doing 40, it might become an issue, but for right now, I'm very comfortable. My legs, again, not hitting the front seat. Now, when the seats are up, it doesn't offer the most cargo space. We will talk about the cargo space here in a second, but sitting back here, I feel like an adult. I can sit back here properly. I could spend an entire road trip back here and not really think twice about it. I do have my own cup holders back here, which is a nice feature, but nothing groundbreaking. And I do have my own climate vents up here as well. So the third row is not forgotten. I can actually get air conditioning and heating back here. This is why you buy a minivan. I'm gonna talk about it, well, really rant about it towards the end of the video, but this is the best part of the minivan is the third row seats. To my knowledge, even the Chevy Tahoe does not have as good a third row seats as any minivan I've driven. Excluding the Mazda 5. The Mazda 5 had a terrible back seat, but that's also the size of a peanut. So I just, I can't get over how good this third row is. I am sitting normally. I'm not squished. This is nicer than any flight I've ever taken. <laughs> I really, really enjoy this third row back seat. I'll stop ranting about it, but it, it really is that good. And this is why you buy a minivan. And this is why the Sedona is so good. So we're on the back of the Kia Sedona LX. No power tailgate, unfortunately, but I wanted to leave the seats down at first. And so you could see all of this cargo room, 12 volt outlet right here, love that. But this is the seat operation. There are no power seats back here, but they're pretty simple. Pull up like that and then pull the string like so, and then they'll lock into place. Not the best because they are not power. If you have back issues or struggle lifting things, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. I would look for other minivans with power folding seats because it is ever so slightly a little struggle to pull up like that. And then you gotta pull this string. So for nine out of 10 people, this is not a struggle. But if you do have back issues or something, that's something you're gonna wanna look out for. Now we gotta talk about the looks. This here Sedona is finished in silky silver. Not so sure about that name, but I think it looks fine. It's a pretty basic color. It's not going to wow the soccer team when you pull up. However, I think it's presentable. And yet again, this is another area where I think the Sedona could be updated. The reason I keep saying that is because Kia's almost entire lineup has gotten a refresh in the last couple of years. The Stinger is still pretty new, all things considered. The Telluride's still pretty new. The Rio got a refresh. The K5 replaced the Optima. The Sorento got a very impressive refresh. And now because its siblings are so much more modern and better looking, it kind of makes the Sedona look a little bit older. All right, so literally on the same day of me filming this, February 23rd, only a few hours after I was done filming this review, Kia announced the refresh for the Kia Sedona. It's going to be called the Kia Carnival, or Carnival, which is what it's called overseas and in a bunch of different countries, but it is getting a refresh. I don't know who at Kia bugged the Sedona that I was driving. They are coming with a refresh. However, it won't come with a hybrid. It's still only front wheel drive. It's switching to a 3.5 liter instead of a 3.3 liter V6. And other than that, not too many other details are out for the Carnival, but 2022, we'll see a refreshed Kia minivan, which I'm sure I'll review as soon as they hit dealers. But now I wanna talk about minivans as a whole. Well, okay, first of all, let me talk about the Sedona as a whole. I like it, I've always liked the Sedona. I think it's always been a solid economic choice. This here model is stickered at $31,000, which is not bad at all. 
I think you get a lot of vehicle for $31,000. Is it a luxury vehicle? No. Is it state of the art? No, but it works. Now let me talk about minivans as a whole. And like I said, I've been in multiple conversations recently with my friends about why minivans are good. Specifically my friend Tyler and my friend Matt. And the argument always is, why wouldn't I just get a big SUV? Let's pit it up against its sibling, the Kia Sorento. A vehicle that I'm very, very fond of, by the way. Well, here's the thing. If I had a family, if I had more than two kids, I would go for a minivan every day of the week. Reason number one, the doors slide back instead of opening at like 60 degrees. Some SUVs don't open up all the way. So getting a car seat in, lifting a toddler, small child, dog, soccer balls, footballs, wrestling equipment, whatever it may be, it's hard to fit in some of the openings of the doors of SUVs. This has the sliding doors, bada bing, bada boom, you're right in. The second reason is the low floor. SUVs are higher up. They're harder to get into. They're harder to get things into. You can load stuff into the floor of a minivan a lot easier. Now, of course, the minivans do suffer from ride height. And if you're driving through an Arctic Tundra, it's not the best in the world. But besides that, you have a nice low floor, easy to get things in and out of, and nice wide open doors to get people in and out of. My second reason is the third row seats. The third row seats are actually designed to fit human beings. Like I said, as much as I love the Kia Sorento, I didn't really fit in the back seats all that comfortably. And so if you're only going to ever use the back seats once, and you're probably not gonna put a full-size human back there, sure, the, the Kia Sorento's fine in that way. But someone who has two plus kids, they're gonna be bringing their friends along, you're gonna be on long road trips, people are gonna be back there for extended amount of time, there is no beating minivans. There just isn't. There just isn't any beating them. Last but not least, in my experiences with driving the 2021 Sienna, 2021 Odyssey, and now the 2021 Sedona, visibility is a huge difference in minivans. It's very angular, the back is very square, but that creates very minimal blind spots for all minivans across the board. I can't think of a single minivan I've ever driven where I didn't feel like I had adequate vision out the front, sides, and rear. That can't be said about some SUVs. Some SUVs make it feel like I'm piloting a cave, but that's not the case here. And so my final argument for minivans is that they just make life easier. You don't have to lift car seats up into a vehicle. It's easy for people to get in and out of. Nine times out of 10 minivans have an aisle to get to the back seat, so it's nice and easy to get into that back seat. They're designed to make your life easier when you have children or a big family. And so if you have one kid, fine, get an SUV. But if you have two plus kids, and you still have an SUV and you're not even looking at minivans, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. And with that being said, I think that this is a really quality, solid minivan. I hope the Sedona sticks around for a while. I hope it gets a refresh to stay more modern with its competitors. I hope it gets a hybrid. I hope it gets a digital dashboard. I hope it gets some diamond stitching that we've been seeing on the Chrysler Pacifica and even the Sorento actually now has some diamond stitching at the very top level, so maybe they can bring that over the Sedona. But that's it. Those are my thoughts on the Kia Sedona. I really like it, but I like minivans overall. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Gerald Kia for letting me take out their 2021 Kia Sedona. It's always good to get a sampling of a ton of different vehicles and Gerald Kia lets me do that. They are absolutely awesome, fantastic customer service. They always greet me with a smile every morning I come in to film and they are the best in the Chicagoland area and honestly, probably the country. They have a lifetime warranty on their vehicles. They're just absolutely awesome. So please, if you're in the market for a new vehicle, maybe not even a Kia, they have tons of used vehicles as well. Check out Gerald Kia. Their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.